We are trying to sail up the west coast of North America all the way to Alaska, but we just had a serious issue with our boat and had to pull into Columbia River for this emergency haulout. Now we need to fix the boat before we can face our next obstacle, crossing the Columbia River bar back into the Pacific Ocean. This is the world's most dangerous bar crossing. It is called the Graveyard of the Pacific for a reason, as over 2,000 shipwrecks are scattered around the area and over 700 seafarers have lost their lives here. But before crossing the bar, we first need to fix our boat. Oh no no no! That's how much play we got! That's way too much! So here the rubber strips are worn. When you use the travel lift like this, you basically pay per the amount of time used. So you, I didn't really have time to film this properly, so I'm just gonna walk you through the process really quick. This is gonna be the centerboard. So it sits inside this aluminum um, box inside the hull and it swings in and out like this. And up the sides of the box are um, some rubber strips. And these rubber strips are supposed to keep the centerboard from moving from side to side. And now, um, once we were hauled out, it became obvious that these rubber strips are too thin and we need to replace them with thicker ones. I used some pieces of aluminum and some strips of wood that I tried to stick between the rubber strips and the centerboard just to try and measure how much thicker the new rubber strips could be. Because obviously you want them to be as thick as possible so that the centerboard doesn't move. But of course, if they are too thick, then uh, the centerboard will get stuck. The centerboard is not really completely evenly shaped at the top and also the box wasn't completely symmetrical I think. So in the end I kind of just had to eyeball it and when I just went with the dimensions that I think are going to work but I'm not I'm not completely sure. That was a bit of a frustrating process and we just have to hope for the best. The centerboard is held with just one pin um, and it, it pivots on that pin and the pivot the pin is like located at the top end of the centerboard you just strike the pin to get it out it's located inside the boat you just strike it and then after that you are able to lower the centerboard onto the ground using the control lines the centerboard itself is actually not that heavy because it's hollow um, it doesn't have any ballast in it all of the ballast that we have in this boat is inside the hull so the centerboard is hollow, it's actually buoyant when it's in the water. I know some of you are gonna ask, hey, how did you not realize the problem with the centerboard during your initial refit? And the, and the reason that we didn't realize this before it was too late is that when we were doing the initial refit, the boat was blocked down so low and so close to the ground that we couldn't really test the centerboard system properly. And because I had heard that the previous owner did a complete uh, rehaul or overhaul of the centerboard system, I kind of thought, yeah, it's gonna be okay. But turns out it wasn't. So that's that's how it went. And now we are waiting for the new rubber strips. And while we are waiting, we are just gonna do a couple other really important boat projects. First up was the replacement of the remaining port lights, three on the starboard side and two on the port side. Just a quick removal and a relatively easy and quick clean up and the new port light lenses were soon ready to go in. We have now replaced 24 port lights, windows and hatch lenses on this boat 
and these last ones were by far the easiest and quickest ones to do. Up next was replacing the leaky propeller shaft seal which caused us problems in the previous video. I replaced it with a different type of a seal. I also checked the engine and the shaft alignment and made sure that the propeller shaft was centered in the shaft tube. I also added some aluminum shims under the engine mounts. After some big delays, the new centerboard strips were finally ready and we called in the travel lift to install the centerboard. We tried a few different strategies for getting the centerboard back in. I thought it would be clever to try and lower the whole boat down onto the centerboard, but it didn't work out. So in the end, we had to lift the centerboard up into its box using the control lines again. With that finally out of the way, we launched the boat. The new propeller shaft seal leaked less than the previous one, so let's just call that a moderate success. We wanted to continue our journey north towards Alaska, but now we had a new issue. Coastal water should keep your water washing to keep the Falcon Oregon at 10 nautical miles. Small craft advisor in effect until 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this afternoon. Gale warning in effect from 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time this afternoon through Wednesday morning. Hazardous seas warning in effect from Wednesday morning through Wednesday after correction, Wednesday afternoon. Tonight, west winds 15 to 25 knots, becoming west and northwest 25 to 35 knots. Seas 10 to 17 feet, scattered showers. The winter had arrived, and despite the relatively benign conditions inside the harbor, things were getting rough out on the ocean. We wanted to continue sailing north towards the relatively protected Strait of Juan de Fuca, but Mother Nature and the Columbia River Bar were not cooperating anymore. When even a reasonably sized ocean swell meets the outflow of the Columbia River, the resulting conditions at the river entrance are scary, and that is when the Coast Guard closes the bar completely. All stations, all stations, all stations. The United States Coast Guard Sector River. United States Coast Guard Sector River. United States Coast Guard Sector River. As of 1742, local time, our ships based on last night observations are as follows. The Great Sword of Mars currently restricted to all recreational unexpected patch vessels at the 11th. Columbia River Bar is currently restricted to all recreational unexpected patch vessels. When the Pacific Ocean gets angry at this time of the year, it usually stays angry for a long time, and we got used to hearing the same thing every day on our VHF. Coast Guard has determined that unsafe conditions exist on the Columbia Bar. All recreational boats and unexpected passenger vessels are not permitted to operate west of Bully Love due to unsafe conditions. The Columbia River Bar is currently restricted to all recreational boats and unexpected commercial passenger vessels west of Bowie 11. <clears throat> so I have a small confession to make. We actually never listen to the VHF radio weather forecasts or bar reports. Instead, we just look those up online, just like pretty much every other normal person nowadays. I just recorded that stuff just because I thought it would look more dramatic on video. Anyway, with the bar being closed, there was nothing left to do but wait and watch the tugboats and ships at their work.
actually I lied earlier. There's always a boat project to do and this time it was installing the autopilot. The main things to install were the new screen and the autopilot working unit which gets connected to the rudder shaft. Alright guys, I know you missed out on most of this build, but now I finally have something to show you because underneath here the autopilot drive unit has been mounted and I have modified this uh, aft lazarette or, the, or this um, storage space here and I'll show you what it looks like. So you have to go here and then you open this and obviously plywood here is still unfinished I need to um, sand and paint all of that at some point it's super sturdy but uh, because the drive unit has to be vertical well I had to make this uh, plastic piece here this plastic shim as well and I don't really have good tools to make anything like that here in the boat so I had to use just an angle grinder and a hacksaw to make this three-dimensional shape and it wasn't wasn't very easy and these drive units this one is the Raymarine linear drive unit and they are really nice I've been really happy with them I had one like this on Sylvia as well just a bit of a smaller one I'm really looking forward to getting this system to fully operational because our current autopilot is not really that great so now i'm just gonna make these wiring connections here i've been working together with raymarine for a long time we started before i had even posted my first videos here on youtube the raymarine evolution series autopilot is one of the most important pieces and at the same time also one of my favorite pieces of gear on board so shout out to raymarine Anyway, after two weeks of waiting, the river bar was finally open again and we had a favorable but windy forecast that would hopefully allow us to cross the bar into the Pacific Ocean and continue heading north. We are underway, currently doing six and a half knots with just uh, the second reef and the engine idling. I'm gonna keep the engine on until we cross the bar. It's quite windy outside, we still have a small craft advisory and the bar is closed for vessels under 26 feet. But we are over 26 feet and these ships are pla passing quite close by. The channel here is not really that wide. The bar crossing is a little bit bumpy. If you are unfamiliar with how it works, is that the Columbia River, it's a huge river, it, it flows down into the Pacific and the current can be very, very high. So for example today, uh, the ebb current is um, 5.5 knots. 
So you have to hit the bar at slack tide or um, flood tide. And if you do it during ebb, then it's going to be it's going to be bad. Apparently, the current is gonna be against the swell coming in from the sea, and all kinds of nasty things are going to happen. Today, though, it's been fine. I have now stolen Sohvi's position here with the reindeer belt. Uh, we have two of these, we brought them from Finland. And these are just super warm, super comfy and they're supposed to last pretty well. Um, we'll see about that. And they certainly pack a lot smaller. When you roll them up they pack pretty small. Especially if you compare them to cockpit uh, cushions. So, this is an ongoing test. The reason that this is so warm is because the fur is hollow, just like polar bear fur and many other arctic, arctic animals. Maybe we should get the other one from inside. Yeah. Or maybe that's just my seat. <laughs> the reindeer pelts, you know, they are a byproduct of the um, uh, reindeer meat and so basically in Finland the reindeer husbandry is, is for they do it for meat mostly and the pelts are kind of a byproduct pushing seven and a half eight knots even with uh, just the stay sail and the conditions they are just pretty much as as good as it could get this time of the year i guess you know the seas are pretty flat and uh, yeah just good sailing right now whoa whoa With the bar crossing safely and perhaps a bit anticlimactically behind us, we wanted to make our way to the Strait of Juan de Fuca, approximately 150 nautical miles north. This would be an overnight passage and we soon settled into our watchkeeping rhythm, with the main activities being napping and eating. Hot dogs. Vegetarian hot dogs. Hello. I'm hungry. Sleeping makes you hungry. Yeah, I think the the seasickness things they make me a little bit tired. I'm like very tired. Our pharaoh is seasickness pills. They're not supposed to make you tired though. Coffee now tin which is just antihistamine and 50 milligrams of antihistamine and 50 milligrams of caffeine. So not supposed to make you tired, but kind of still does. I guess we are waiting for a bit more before shaking the reef off because we are still doing over 7 knots all the time so not really useful to get rid of the reef and 
if we have the full mainsail up and if there's a rain shower or something, it might get a little bit uncomfortable with, you know, wind from the clouds. So we'll continue like this. And I have to say this is pretty much a luxury, this this big dodger and the, and the back wall. It's just so protected from the wind when you are sitting here. And I think this kind of a high dodger is a really good compromise for this size of a boat because I just find that a lot of the pilot, pilot house designs, they just, I don't know, you don't really have such good visibility from the pilot house, maybe, and they are really not that functional. I think this is like a really good compromise. We have really good visibility from here and we have like really quick access to the winches over there and then over there at the bulkhead we have the plotter and we're gonna have a couple other screens there as well and we can you know adjust the autopilot from there. Night watch. I'm doing the first watch here. So we is napping down below. And it's just a really really beautiful night. We kind of rarely get this full moon clear sky nights. It's kind of hard to capture that on the camera. But I'm trying my best. Usually we do around three hour watches when it's the two of us But you know for example right now I'm not really feeling tired because I kind of um, Was laying down for a while earlier earlier already So even though three hours is pretty much gone I'm gonna be staying up for a little bit more before I wake her up and it's just really bright, really bright outside with the uh, with the moon. I absolutely don't actually need any any lights. Like I don't need a flashlight um, to walk on the deck outside. Uh, the moon is so bright that you know there's like sharp shadows and everything. But um, I just have the light on because I'm talking to the camera right now. That's the only reason to have the light on. We are pretty much the only pleasure vessel underway on the US West Coast right now. It's December, so I guess that's pretty understandable. You know, when I was looking for, googling for information about sailing here on the coast and some of the bar crossings and whatever and I stumbled up upon like some information for sailors and cruisers and also some forum thread threads and there everyone wrote that you know you have to be you have to do this last stretch the northern stretch of the coast you have to be done by 1st of October and that was um, that was two months ago I guess we missed that Good morning, typical December stormy weather here in the northern Pacific. Just woke up and 
got both of the head sails out now and just I don't know just incredible we are only doing like three knots right now but that's fine I don't want to turn the engine on because we are not in a hurry I want to let Sohvi sleep because I think she's going to wake up if I turn the engine on and we only have around 25 miles to go to Nia Bay which is like around that headland over there so we are gonna make it before dark anyway I hope Strait of Juan de Fuca. This would be our entrance to the inside passage to Alaska, but it is also a key shipping route to Seattle and Vancouver. Our plotter screen was lit up with all kinds of cargo ships entering and leaving the strait. We are just passing the northernmost point of the continental USA. So we are just rounding the Cape Flattery Lighthouse and that means that we are entering the Strait of Juan de Fuca and um, in front of us is gonna be the Fra Vancouver Island. We can see some snow, that is nice, it means maybe we can get some skiing in soon. I want to get further north so you know so that we can climb up and ski directly from the bo boat but maybe we can sneak in a day at the um, at a ski resort or something over here. What's not so nice though is that we are tacking upwind right now. The wind is funneling straight down the strait and it's just uh, kind of annoying right now because the Genoa, I don't want to use it before I tweak it. I don't want to have the have it flapping unnecessarily because um, that just wears out the sail really fast and the stay sail alone isn't enough we just don't have enough power so we are going like boom 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 against the waves and um, we are quite slow slow right now What's also not nice is that I already saw a couple of uh, big logs floating down the strait and uh, supposedly in this area there's gonna be quite a few and if you hit one of them then it's gonna make a big loud bang. You know, I think Lumi can take it um, but we still probably want to try and avoid those as much as possible. With the wind now coming straight down on us, uh, we've decided to go to Nia Bay, which is the first harbor here, right at the entrance to the strait. So it's around, I don't know, seven, eight miles away right now. And uh, we'll tuck in there and uh, wait for better, better wind to continue. Mielenkiintoinen paikka. Ja, se on vähän tämmöinen aamunlaita. Aika tämmöisiä elämäänä neitä veneitä täällä kyllä. 
Tässä on varmaan pari, jotka ei enää menossa hirveästi kalalle. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed putting this one together and I hope you liked it too. If you made it all the way to the end and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider doing so. Uh, my channel analytics here on YouTube show that a large majority of the viewers have not subscribed. Even a large majority of the return viewers haven't subscribed. That's a completely free way to support the channel doesn't cost you a penny you just need to click the button below and that's it and if you do have the financial means there's always the patreon group or the patreon site where you can support the channel as a patron you get access to ad free videos and a whatsapp chat group and then there's also a tracker with a live position of the boat and there i also update all of the anchorages and harbors that we go to and there's short descriptions for most of them so it's really interesting if you are into boating at all that's pretty much it for this time thank you all for watching again i'll see you all next time bye bye